Uh, Nepal is a, 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 a country of extremes. We are the youngest republic in the world because we have just recently, last year, overthrown uh, uh, the king. Mm. The French Revolution took place just last week. <laughs> <laughs> we are quite so late. We are the Himalayan people. We climb mountains, but we are very slow in politics. <laughs> and uh, we got uh, uh, the king out, and we are now working on the constitution, the drafting the constitution. And also, still, there's a lot of poverty. That's why there's a Maoist movement on. And, uh, uh, and they, there's a lot of work going on. Uh, Nepal is always, I always say, a place of extremes. Extreme poverty, extreme natural splendor, extreme uh, um, hospitality, most beautiful people, most uh, beautiful mountain, the landscape. Uh, but, uh, so the, this is the, the picture of Nepal. In, in, I always say in Sanskrit we have a word called Devatatma, which means place where soul of the God lives. Uh, so uh, we have a very uh, reverential attitude towards the mountains. But still, uh, people are very poor. We don't have roads. And I'm sometimes glad there are no roads because mm, if there are roads, probably those uh, mountains, those peaks won't be that exotic. <laughs> and uh, no, no tourist will go and we will be uh, suffering. Uh, and um, I, I, that, that way, I think. But then there's a lot of suffering uh, when people carrying the load up. Uh, the mules and animals and humans, you know, and uh, and Western people carrying their luggage and their whole whole makeup uh, kit and uh, cocktail parties. So this this poem is called Mules, and I start with that. Just to uh, those who are coming first time to give you a feel of what uh, my country is like. On the Great Tibetan Salt Route, I meet them again, old forsaken friends. On their faces, fatigue of a drunken sleep. Their lives worn out, their legs twisted, shaking from carrying illustrious flags of bleeding ascents. Age-long bells clinging to them like festering wounds, beating notes of his slavery that modernism brings. Cartoons of iceberg, mineral water bottles, solar heaters, tiny tiles, tin cans, carom boards, sacks of rice, and iodized salt from the plains of Nepal Tarai. Butterflies of the terrace fields know their names, singing brooks, tempests of their breathless climb. Traffic blurred and time tested, they climb, carrying dreams of posh peacocks, pamphlets of a secret religious war, filled of an ecologist trial semen, entire kitchen for a cocktail party at the base camp, defunct development agendas of guilty donors, the West's weird visions lusting for an instant purge. Stone steps of the mountains embossed on their drugged brains like lines of a boated love scratched on the historic rocks of the water spouts. Starry skies of the dozing valleys know the ache of their secret sweat. Sunny days along the crystal rivers taste of their bleeding eyes. And the greatest fiction of their struggling lives lost like real mules clattering their hooves on the flagstones encircling the cruel grandeur of bloodthirsty mule paths around the glaciers of Annapurna. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> uh, Annapurna is a range of Himalayas, like Everest, Annapurna, Helambo. Uh, uh, Himalaya start from Afghanistan and they come through India, Pakistan, Tibet, China, you know, and Nepal, Sikkim. So they go over to uh, uh, Burma. So it's a long range. And uh, so Annapurna is a range which I, I love. I go. I used to teach at the university. And then I thought it was uh, because when you teach, you don't write. But the <laughs> students say that, oh, you're very good, sir, and this and that. And then your ego is satisfied. And I was talking in the morning. But, uh, and sometimes they don't even, even if they don't like you, they say you're very good. You know? So, and then for the rest of the day, you do nothing. You say, okay, I, did, I made my day. So I thought it's very dangerous. It was suicidal to teach. And I quit teaching. But it was very dangerous. Because, uh, in, 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 you know, we have this big oral tradition of Sufis and, you know, uh, the devotional poets. And one of the poets say, Kabir, uh, a devotional poet says, Poetry is not easy. If you, he says, his couplet goes like this. He says, if you, uh, Kabir stands on the paths of life, of life. Kabir stands on the crossroads. If you want, if you can put your house on fire, come with me and be a poet. Mm -hmm. 
So poet, writing poetry is not easy. And when in, even in the modern world, because you have to be on side of truth. You have to be on side of light. It, it's, it's difficult to be on side of light. It looks very easy saying that I am a poet. And, but in, in our part of the world, when you are a poet, you are like Shelley would say, unacknowledged legislator of the world. <laughs> so you wouldn't just uh, be a poet. Uh, it, it's a big moral responsibility. So people look at poets like big, uh, big figure, like a saint. And, and we have this, this parallel tradition of, of holy people. Uh, the Sufis, who, who were, uh, as opposed to Vedic or other traditions, the dominant uh, religious traditions, these poets were writing, like Abir saying, oh, what the hell are you doing? Why are you shouting? Allah, Allah. If, if by shouting you get God, even, even if, 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 if a rooster will get God, he cries every morning. And to Hindus he says, why do you cry? Uh, go and take shower and go into the rituals. If by taking shower you get God, fish will get God, even a frog will get God. <laughs> Their conceit is so iconoclastic, but this is a parallel tradition, as opposed to the Hindu, the Vedic, uh, Brahminic tradition, which was predominant. The kings had that religion. But these poets were speaking against these predominant, like now, you know, you're, talk, you're talking about uh, against the establishment. But these poets were nobody. I mean, they were just, they had, but they had small schools and small groups. So we, we had this great tradition. So writing poetry uh, for me became a very formidable thing. And uh, so in, in spite of m many things from my family, they didn't want me to be a poet. <laughs> 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 so, but uh, then I sort of maneuvered the way that I started traveling. I, I first travel I made was not abroad. I made travels to Annapurnas, these beautiful mountains, where you have the pictures with black and white, and uh, these uh, Annapurnas and Everest. So I travel and I went and there, there you see the real Nepal because Himalayas is seen in vivid color and when you go up the mountains, you know altitude does, it's a spiritual thing, heights are important. Like uh, oh, if you say most of the goddesses or the gods, they, they stay on the top of the mountain. The Lord Shiva stays on Kailash. Kailash translated in Nepali would mean heaven, mm -hmm. but it's a mountain Kailash because the mountains are the place of sublime thought. That's the whole thing. And even in the scriptures, you have these people going uh, to the mountains. So Annapurna is name of Shiva's wife, goddess. And uh, uh, Annapurna, uh, she is a... Par Anna, Anna is food. So one who fills you with food. Who fills your house with greenery, with grains. It's a very poetic image because uh, um, you need uh, food. And these, these, these glaciers, they melt and they feed the landscape. Mm -hmm. And you grow feed crops there. So this this Annapurna, and and most important thing that uh, that impresses you there is uh, uh, is uh, silence. So this poem I read about the silence, which speaks and which shouts and which shrieks in your ear, mm -hmm. uh, but which is so beautiful. A poem is called Ghorepani. You know, in those mules they go up, and then after a couple of days you have a, a small water spout in a village, and then they drink there. So the, the, when on the on the salt route, that place is called Ghore Pani. Ghore is horse, Pani is water. So this name is called Ghore Pani, where horses drink water. That's name of the village. So if you come to Nepal, I'll take you trekking. So we can go and stay. It, it's like takes two days to reach there. It's very mule path. It's very high. Uh, but if you make it there, and you can see all the ranges from the top rooftop. It's amazing. All Himalayan ranges, all Annapurna, you can see. And there's a special spot there. And uh, so this poem, uh, while I'm going to Ghorepani. Isn't incessant rain or a morning monsoon broke? Is it a yeti following your trail in the desolate mountains or a crisp leaf rolling on the breath of icy winds? Is it a mat rolled up by a sheet of drying millet or a newly born baby asleep after an oily massage? Is it a huge cucumber left to dry on a rooftop by a busy housewife or a fat rooster dozing by a brown cat by a, um, in a warm sunlight? Is it blaze of a cookery in the emerald green glade or fragrant flash of a shimmering nose ring? Is it a dragonfly skittering through the golden stalks of ripe paddy fields or a shivering sickle reaping misfortune of famished fields? Are these crooked limbs of a burly beer bow, or mossy boughs of a juniper in forest of rain? Is it iridescent feather shed by some blue jay, or a wandering shaman's 
cruel craft? Is it cackle of a lonely thrush, or my own breath weaving a song of silence? Mm -hmm. ah. Thank you.